Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Garcia. I'm a student here at Fullstack, and today I will be giving an introduction to Electron. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so a quick outline of what I will be talking about today. Give a quick introduction of what Electron is and why we might use it. A uh, quick history before Electron. And then kind of more in depth of what Electron actually is. And a typical Electron applications architecture. And then we'll end with a quick demo. So what is Electron? Well, it's a framework for building cross-platform desktop applications with web technologies. So that means HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And why is this novel? Why would we use this? Well, it eliminates the need to learn specific operating system languages. So on Windows, you might have to learn a specific language and all the nuances that go with that. And same goes with a Mac operating system or Linux. So a little history leading up to Electron. In 2008, Chrome is released and it joins the so-called browser wars, and which included Firefox and Internet Explorer. And that came with Chromium, which is an open source web browser. And that's the basis of what Chrome is. And the goal of Chromium was to be basically a shell for the web or a tabbed window manager. And also V8 was developed, which is an open source JavaScript engine. And it was pretty novel and one of the fastest engines out there at the time uh, and added features such as dynamic code optimization at runtime. So then in 2009, Node.js is released. It's also open source. It's a cross-platform JavaScript runtime environment. And it also leverages Google's VA JavaScript engine. And th what this did was it allowed developers to run JavaScript outside of the browser. And as we all know here at Fullstack, this led to the ability for Fullstack JavaScript. And another thing that comes with Node is NPM, which is Node's package manager which includes over 350,000 packages and hundreds more coming every week. So more in depth about what Electron actually is. So in 2013, it came into the scene. Again, it's a framework for building cross-platform desktop applications with web technologies. And how does it do this? Well, it takes Chrome's content library, which is in charge of rendering web pages, and combines it with Node.js into a single runtime. So what benefits does this give us? Well, it gives us all the latest Chrome features, as well as it gives us all the benefits of all the Node.js Node APIs and NPM. So also, since Chromium is packaged in all of your applications, you no longer have to worry about cross-browsing compatibility. And just from personal experience, um, may be developing in the Chrome browser with some of the latest frameworks. So like, uh, for example, Flexbox, and I'm developing, and then I come across Internet Explorer, and then the web page looks horrible, and it just blows up the, the application. But here, in, with Electron, that's not necessarily the case because Chromium is the only web browser that you have to uh, make sure your tests work for. Also, you can package your application for Windows, Mac, and Linux with literally one line of code, and that includes uh, 32 and 64 bit for um, each operating system. Also included is the use of all the native UI features, dialogues, and the menus. So here I'll give a typical Electron application architecture. So there's two types of processes. The main process is one of them, and it's the application lifecycle. So it interfaces with the operating system. It controls starting and ending the application. And it has access to modules such as Node.js, menu, would, which would be your native system menus, something called IPC, which is the communication protocol among, among all the processes, and browser window, which is a constructor function that spawns off the second type of process, which is a renderer process. And you can think of this as kind of the UI of your program, um, but in reality, it just kind of renders a web page. And this has access to Node.js and the DOM. And note here that you have Node.js and the DOM in the same process. 
Also, it has IPC for communication to the main process, as well as other renderer processes, as well as remote, which allows a renderer process to run actions in the main process. So here's kind of a typical architecture for um, an Electron application. You'd have one main process, and then you can spawn off multiple renderer processes. And so you can think of these as different windows in your application. And also, renderer processes don't necessarily have to render a web page. You can actually farm out some of the logic in your main process to a renderer process. And you can kind of think of this setup as something similar to your Chrome application, the browser. So the application itself would be the main process. And then each tab to web page would be equivalent to a renderer process. So here's a quick demo. Um, it's a pretty simple demo where we're just going to create one window, um, one application window, and display some of the system information on my computer. So it's a very simple app. It's pretty small, just three main files, a package.json, main.js, and index.html. So we'll talk about the package.json first. It's no different than any other package.json. You can create it with npm init. But the main properties that you need would be name. So here it's called tech talk demo. Main, which is the entrance into your application. A start script, which just runs the Electron command line tool, as well as Electron as a dev dependency. Next up is the main.js file. So here we're going to require in Electron, and then two other helper functions, path and URL. On line five, we'll set up a window object. And then on line seven, we're going to do app.onReady. So when the, app, when the application is actually ready, we will create a new browser window on line nine. So this is a constructor function, and you can set, and this is what you'll see in the application. So you can set the width and the height and other features such as if you want a frameless window or a framed window. And, and then we set this to the window object. And then in line 14, we actually tell where to or what to render. So here it'd be in slash app slash index.html. So that brings us to index.html. It's just like any other HTML document. You have a HTML tags, head, and title called my electron app. And then on line nine, we'll print out hello full stack in an H1. And then I also have an inline script. Um, and I put this here just to show that we have Node and the DOM kind of running in the same process. So I'm going to require in OS, which is a module in Node. And then I'm going to do a document.write. I'm going to write what platform this computer is running on, as well as how much memory it has. So to start the app, you're just going to run npm start, which runs Electron in the current directory. And then you'll see on your menu bar, uh, right now it's set to the, the default icon and name, so Electron and then Electron's um, icon. And then your program will appear. So the title is My Electron App, just like we set. And we have an H1 for Hello Full Stack. And it says, we are running on a Darwin platform because I'm running on a Mac. And then a total memory of about eight and a half gigabytes. So just a, I'll go over a couple of features on what you get with just a stock Electron application. Uh, with You can do dev tools. So since this uses the Chromium architecture, you have full access to dev tools just like the Chrome browser. So you can inspect the elements. You can write to the console. You can look at network. And basically, anything you can do in the Chrome browser, you can do in your desktop application. And just some other features, it has ES2015 stock. Also, you can do things such as get the user's geolocation. You can use the webcam and microphone. P2P or peer-to-peer -peer applications with WebRTC. CSS custom properties. HTML imports and native desktop and push notifications. So I put just a couple apps that were built on Electron. Everyone here knows what Slack is, the messaging application for Teams. So that was built on Electron. Also, my favorite text editor is uh, Atom, and that's also built on Electron. 
and a couple others here. So like Microsoft Visual Studio Code, GroupMe, Basecamp, um, Hyperterminal, and it's, it's a pretty long list. So that's it. And that's an introductory introduction to Electron. Thanks for listening.